Hey, Jeff Kelderman here, Kelderman Trucks. Today we're going to kind of do an overview and provide with some installation tips on our 2019 Ram 10 to 12 kit. So as you can see, this kit's already been put on. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through kind of a step-by-step -step on how we do it here at the factory and uh, hopefully save you a little bit of grief on putting this thing in and make it a little quicker. So we've already got, you know, our big cross members uh, put in. So what we do when we first get this truck is we will jack this thing up in the air. If you got a lift, it's going to be a lot easier, but I understand not everybody's got a lift that's doing this. So we get this thing up in the air, and uh, first thing we do is there's two bolts on the factory OEM cross member on the passenger side that come out from the back. you got to cut those off because uh, they're going to hit the exhaust. So first thing, we cut those off. Um, we put a, a stand underneath the transmission, uh, when, and then we remove the transfer kit. So now we got the transfer case out, what we're going to do is you're going to see we provided the clocking ring. That's going to be a 6 bolt for the 68 RFE, you're going to have an 8 bolt for the AC. So uh, clocking the transfer case down so we can get this angle on the drive shaft a lot more flat, you know, closer to OEM. So we actually put the transfer case clocking ring in installation first, then we'll actually just take a couple of bolts and shove in the uh, OEM cross member for now. So we kind of walk away from that part. So next what we do is we typically come up here, pop off the factory sway bar. We, we drop off our steering linkage, we move the factory uh, pitman arm. We will put our big drop pitman arm on next. Then we will put our sway bar assembly in here. Uh, it's got a pillow block bearing, it's got some brackets on there. It's got a bracket brace that comes on top of the steering box. What that's going to do is going to keep all we're steering, you know, keep that box from uh, uh, flexing with the, with the frame when we run this really long pitman arm. At the same time, we're going to be popping off our factory pan hard bar drop and putting our pan hard bar in, uh, drop in there. And you'll see these have some uh, you know, smooth bolts, uh, helmet heads in there, so that it provides a little space here on the uh, roof when the bag goes up and down. So, typically, after we get our bracket in here. Now we haven't put the sway bar back on, but we got our uh, steering box, brace, the brackets, pan hard bar, or pan hard bar drop, all that in there. Then what we will do then is lower this down, pull out the factory springs, pull out the factory shocks. So a couple things when we're putting our upper bag mount in place. Okay, we've got um, the remote, the shock remote resi bracket that's got to go in between here and the spring bucket. We're going two bolts here. 3 8 bolt, and then we're drilling, tapping the 3 8 bolts into the side of the frame. So hold this up in place, mark your four holes, drill and tap them, boom, and put this bracket in. Just remember to put your remote resi uh, bracket in the same time when you do this upper uh, bag mount. The lower bag mount, it attaches with three bolts. You got a couple 3 8 bolts on front, and you've got another bolt back here that you're going to drill and tap here. That's a half inch bolt back there. In between here, you'll see a little bit of gap put a couple washers in there. What we typically do is take a couple flat washers, just put some black tape around them, stick them down in there, drip them and, uh, and uh, fasten it in. You can reach in here and get to the, the bolt heads. It's not real easy, but you can reach in there and get to it. So I just mentioned on the other end that we've got our, our uh, pan hard bar drop on there. So what I didn't say is, you know, it does have a couple bolts in there, but we have to do some welding on it. So you'll see there's a couple holes in the bottom of it we weld to it. Also gonna weld it around the cross member because uh, a lot of stress on that thing so that's why it comes so far underneath the engine cross member we weld all around there. So the opposite end, so you're going to use this factory pan hard bar bolt here and uh, it's a two piece setup. We've got bracket here, we've got bracket here that bolts on the side and then we have a spacer that goes in here with that factory pan hard bar one. So all this gets fastened together here to provide your lower um, mount for the adjustable track bar that we provide. It also comes up here and um, connects to where the factory end link connected. We're also using that to uh, attach the bottom of the passenger side end link right here. See here, we've got the steering stabilizer set up installed also. Um, we typically do this the last thing, but again, the way it got up in the air, it's really not gonna matter what order you do. So you got these outer brackets, you just got the factory two bolts that bolt through. Okay, got the half inch bolt here. There's no spacers or anything here. There's just a couple, just the bolts come straight down. Come around here, you got the center section, 
You got two bolts where it fastens here, and on the bottom, it's fastening with a couple OEM bolts there. You come over here, if you've got a, a, an aftermarket, like a PML or a, a, a MagTech diff cover, you won't use the spacer behind here. So there's a little spacer right behind there that's about three eighths of an inch thick. So um, obviously OEM diff cover, so we have a spacer in there. You come around, get this little tie bracket that, that fastens right on top of the two shocks and uh, there's no spacers are in here. And uh, on the outside, that bolts on, we have an outer clamp, and then we also use an OEM bolt for the uh, driver's side shock. Okay, so now we got a lot of the, you know, pretty much most of the kit installed on the axle, the steering, hand hard bar. We're gonna come back here and talk about this big cross member. So there's a trick to doing this, because we have behind this bolt, this is a welding uh, bung that gets welded on the side of the frame. So what we do, you're gonna be in a situation now where you take out the factory cross member, you're gonna slide this up. Now this is two or three man job, so don't be trying to do this by yourself because you will not be able to pull this off. So what we do, slide it in place and grab these 9 16 bolts and slide them through. Okay, um, you can also, there's a three quarter inch bolt here, you can kind of just finger tight uh, set this up. How to get this bung welded onto the frame, there's a little trick we've learned. So what we do is we take a half inch center punch so that's going to be tight in this hole. Slide it through and use a hammer and center punch that right in the center to the frame. Okay, that will give you uh, the correct fitment on where that bung needs to go. So then you do that on both sides. So then you drop down your cross member. Okay, you'll take that uh, same center punch or a slightly smaller center punch, slide it through the bung, hold that against the frame using. The, the center punch mark on the side of the frame for location, tack it in place. If you want to lift it up, double check. That's not a bad idea. But uh, that's how you locate it by using that center punch on the side of the frame to know where to weld that bung on. Well, drop this down, weld your bung on, slide this in place. You've got, uh, you know, the, the 9 16 I think there's seven inch bolts that go through there. Got a half inch by two coming through here. It's welded bung here, and then you got another bracket here that this one is going to be welded to the frame also. So there's a little bracket that welds to the back of the frame. Um, you know, might as well do that at the same time. You know, tack that in place while you're uh, got got this uh, uh, before you put this in uh, bung welded in, so you can do it all at the same time. And we got a cross member in. We've got um, you know upper upper and lower bag mounts. Uh, we've got our, our pan hard bar in here. Uh, next thing we're we'll doing is we're going to put in our trailing arms. So uh, uh, the written instructions will tell you real close within an eighth of an inch where you want to set these trailing arms and uh, refer to that measurement putting these in because that'll, that'll get, your, your, uh, get your caster set pretty darn close and that'll uh, save you on a lot of adjustment time when you get this thing on the road. So uh, we drop our, our 5 8 bolts through here. Um, there's a few washers in here. So you'll want to refer to the written instructions that will show, show you some good pictures of which ones go where. So anyway, so real quick, you'll, you'll set your trailing arms to the, uh, set, uh, the numbers in the instructions, and you'll just slide in the bolts on the 7 8 end back here, and then you use the 18 millimeter bolts to go onto the axle. Now one thing I do is on these dodges, you got to make sure these are offset, okay? So um, the, the, the basically the, the Gussets go toward the center of the truck, so the top and bottom corners of where these thread into are facing the tire, and they're, they're spread out farther. If you get them flipped around and they're close, you'll get a lot of rocking action, and uh, we definitely don't want that. All right, so this uh, kit also comes with longer brake lines. Uh, the, the bottom end just fastens right here on top of the axle, like the factory one. It's clear up in here, inside the frame. So uh, on the passenger side, the turbo side, you'll see there's some plastic, kind of some um, you know reflective material for heat. Make sure you you know reuse that so we don't get that brake line too hot and melted. All right, so we have uh, upper and lower shock mounts for this thing. So uh, these there's a right and a left. So this is designed to keep uh, with how this angles, so you'll be able to tell because you want this bolt level. So just bolts up to the factory uh, spot where the factory shock did. We're our half inch bolt right here. We come down here. The bottom one will have to be welded on because uh, otherwise it'll rotate. So um, we just run a couple down, uh, a downhand stitch on the outside and 
a little bit across the bottom and that's all you have to do. So we provide uh, longer sway bar end links and uh, so we have a little adapter bracket that just bolts on here, the half inch bolt to the end of the OEM uh, sway bar. And this, these guys here are using 916 bolts. Uh, there are little spacers on here, so make sure you get those orientated the correct way. And uh, run the bolts out. To run the bolt in, it's going to scratch up on your paint hard bar drop. We don't want that. So uh, these, uh, we just run only like a thread on them, so you can check to make sure both sides are the same length when you're installing it.